A warm welcome to your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Monday, March 7. Public service vehicle owners and operators are bracing for a hit from the increase in petroleum products. Effective midnight Sunday, gasoline at the pump went up to $4.13 per litre, an increase of 14 cents. Diesel also moved to $3.46 per litre, a hike of 17 cents. Chairman of the Alliance Owners of Public Transport, Roy Raphael, tells Barbados today it's a big blow for the sector and he's anxious to resume talks with government on PSVs transitioning to electric vehicles. So it will have a significant impact on our operation, right? Because you are well aware that, the, that we, uh, our vehicles consume a lot of um, diesel and some gas and really when you look at it, we have over five, over 500 public service vehicles out there, as well as over 2,500 taxis. So we, we definitely will feel it in the pocket. But um, what we propose, though, is to look at uh, going forward is to start having discussions with the relevant authority as we relate to uh, transitioning our vehicles to electric. Um, this association has started discussions with the Ministry of Energy um, some time ago. Um, it was said that they were, um, we were, we looked to them for assistance in transitioning um, a few of our buses to a, a loan for the IADB. We have not heard anything further. Infants B students at schools across the island will soon be able to have their hearing tested free of charge. It's all thanks to the launch of the Rotary Club of Barbados' West Ellen Steinbuck Hearing Screening Project. The project is a partnership involving the Ministry of Education, Scotiabank and the Barbados Community College. Speaking at the project's official launch this morning, Education Minister Kay McConney strongly endorsed the initiative. We cannot underscore enough the importance of screening our children early for hearing loss and other challenges that can affect their learning experience. The importance is not simply knowing that hearing loss exists. It's getting a, back, a proper diagnosis and then allowing us to intervene and to provide the support, to provide the aids, and also to give them the skills that will help them to navigate not just learning, but life in general. Joseph Steinbach, son of the late Ellen Steinbach, whom the project is named after, said his mother's hearing disability, which started in her childhood, prompted his family's decision to mount the project. In the days when our mother was growing up in Barbados, these type of disabilities were not detected or treated. As a result, she struggled at school as she could not hear what her teachers were saying. She was considered stupid and ostracized. And I know they may seem like strong words, but that is how, as our friend here explained, that is how they actually feel. Socially, she struggled as well. Mommy could read lips and converse in a one-on-one -on -one situation, but not when in groups. As she could not hear properly, she spoke loudly, and her pronunciation was not always correct. Hence, she was not made to feel welcome in many situations. All of my siblings have embraced and contributed to this worthwhile and much needed hearing project. We believe that there is no more fitting a tribute to our mother, Ellen Steinbach, to ensure that as many children as possible with hearing deficiencies can be identified early and assisted. In this way, they may be able to avoid the challenges that she faced in her life and could go on to achieve their full potential. Ten officers of the Barbados Police Service today received top honours from the regional security system. At a short ceremony at police headquarters, Commissioner of Police Richard Boyce, along with his deputy Erwin Boyce and other assistant commissioners, presented RSS medals and letters of commendation to the officers for their outstanding service in St. Vincent and the Grenadines during the aftermath of the eruption of the La Soufer volcano from April 15 to June 18. The officers include Richard Paris, Wingrove Headley, Paul Mears, Kerwin Green, Derek Goodluck, Charles Mears, Sylvester Cummins, Mario Richards, Kimar Gibson, and Jared Headley. 
Barbados recorded 96 new COVID-19 cases, 41 males and 55 females, from the 692 tests conducted by the Best of Santos Public Health Laboratory on Sunday. The positive cases consisted of 23 persons under the age of 18 and 73 who were 18 years and older. There were 47 people in isolation facilities, while 1,384 are in home isolation. Two women, ages 78 and 96, who were both unvaccinated and an 89-year-old vaccinated man succumbed to the virus on Sunday. The death toll now stands at 322. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I am a daughter, and I am a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, Make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news, following a near two-year disruption caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, schools across Jamaica reopened their doors for face-to-face -face classes. More on this report from Television Jamaica. School administrators are hailing the move, citing that the virtual classes or the online learning was not really working for students because of the socio-economic conditions for students. But the vendors to the crossing wardens, they're hailing the move because they too earn a livelihood from the situation. Now, there was an overwhelming number of students who came out to school, according to some of the principals who we spoke to. So much so that they had to get more school equipment, that is desks and chairs for students, in order to make them feel comfortable. Now, they say there will be strict adherence to the COVID-19 protocols, even though some social distancing guidelines have been relaxed. Now, parents are expected to have a little phase basis of how they um, pick up students from school, how they actually bring students to school as well, but they are also hailing the government for the full resumption of face-to-face -face classes. That good feeling, not even say for me one, for she called this morning, she goes and she gives myself about Jenna Daddy. I'm glad for the face-to-face, -face. I'm tired of the internet, I'm tired of the online class, whatever it is in. So it was like a challenge this morning for the, the traffic. I didn't know the school ever kind of say that, but I didn't know they trust me, I'm kind of glad say it's all out face to face five days per week when we got approval in january we did it on a weekly rotational basis so they got a little taste of being back in the physical space but now that they're all together with their friends they are all excited to be back and the teachers are equally excited to have them back on the international scene the International Court of Justice says it will rule as soon as possible after ending a hearing into a legal move by Kiev to stop an unprovoked invasion of Ukraine by Russian troops. The United Nations top court opened the case on Monday and heard arguments from Ukraine. It has scheduled a second session for Tuesday to give Russia a chance to present its case, but Moscow boycotted the proceedings. Russia boycotted hearings at the UN's highest court on Monday, during which Ukraine is seeking an emergency order to halt hostilities. It argues Moscow has falsely applied genocide law in justifying its invasion. Hearings began at the International Court of Justice without legal representation for Russia. This the opening statement from Ukrainian envoy Anton Karenovich. The fact that Russia's seats are empty speaks loudly. They are not here in this court of law. They are on a battlefield, waging aggressive war against my country. My message to Russia is this. Let us settle our dispute like civilized nations. Lay down your arms and put forward your evidence. The court said it regretted Russia's non-attendance. A hearing initially set for Tuesday for Russia to present its case is expected to be cancelled. 
The spokesperson for the Russian embassy in the Netherlands did not reply to a request for comment. Russian President Vladimir Putin has said Russia's special military action is needed, quote, to protect people who have been subjected to bullying and genocide, meaning those whose first or only language is Russian in eastern Ukraine. Karinovich added that Ukraine believes Russia's claims to be baseless and the alleged genocide in eastern Ukraine was, quote, non-existent. The case centres on the interpretation of a 1948 treaty on the prevention of genocide signed by both countries. The ICJ said it would decide as soon as possible on Ukraine's demands. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.